Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subs. Thank you for stopping in and joining us up in here. Well, um, I've been a little busy smoking some fish, cleaning some fish and stuff like that that a buddy of mine gave me and uh, I had to get to them um, and get them squared away. And uh, then I've had some other small engine stuff. I'll show you a little bit of that. But uh, we wrapped up that cutie little 1990 Johnson low profile fitting horsepower motor and uh, I got a little more cosmetics to do on it and it's good to go to get out on the four cell rack and so in my last video I said well what would you like to see and here's a few that I can bring in and uh, so quite a few of you guys weighed in on this one and so that's the one I decided to do I decided so um, yeah I'll show you that one here show you some other stuff that's been keeping me busy and uh, the weather mm, still a little iffy on the iffy side but hey is what it is um, so I got a new victim let's get to it In there. I'm not seeing any crawlies. Things are a little sticky on it. I shot some tri-flow, so I'm gonna pull out these candles and whatnot and do a little bit of a fax check on it. Well, that's always interesting. I open it up and I find a nut and a washer. I don't know. I don't know. Treasures. Always finding treasures in these things. I don't know the year on this. I don't even know how to decipher these uh, Zuki. But she's a little on the dirty, crusty side, but uh, it's a Suzuki, so. Um, I found some cut wires up here, so I'm thinking that might be the kill switch that's cut. What else we got? Oh, there's a creepy crawly dead, but his skeleton is in there. So. These are NGK's BR7HS10. They're, they don't even look like they've been run hardly. Real clean. But let me give it a cursory pullover.
Oops, some stuff up. So, first thing I'm going to do is see what kind of compressionist we got. Um, this is dry. I have not shot anything in these cylinders. So they are very dry. Come on. And let me get rid of my glove. My glop. I've got to get rid of my glop. Oh, put you over here. Put you down here. Come on now. Oh. There we go. Finally got it. Sorry about the background noise. They're weed eating and stuff over there across the street. We are on zero. Let's give her a few and see what we get. Feels good. All right. What we got? What we got? What we got? About one. Thinking about 118 on the bottom. Dry. Let's see what we get on the top. We are on the zero, 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 zero. good ones we are at about 118 so that's pretty good that's a pretty good and now I think what I'm going to do I'm going to put a little tri flow in the cylinders. I'm gonna put the candles back in and just see if she go pop. She might not go pop, but if she does, then might just put her in the tank. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whip, whip, whip. Now, I'm just going to pull it a couple times, see if we get a pop or anything. That's what I'm going to do. Couldn't even tell. I don't see nothing. Huh. Maybe we got no Sparky. At least tighten up one of these clamps, huh? I like how these Suzuki's, they remind me a lot of the old Russian outboards the way the intake is at an angle. I'll show you it here in a bit They look just like a lot like them old Russian outboards that had that but, Well, I can't really give it much more gas than that 
Shouldn't need to choke it up. Boy, the way it's backfiring, it's almost like we got a a timing issue or wonder I don't think so. I mean you would think the top one would go to the top and the bottom to the bottom. But I swear that thing's sounded almost like them. Wires are backwards. Hmm. Let me try something. Let me try it again, I guess. Oh, that's my outboard tank clacking. Yeah. Like, what is that? Um, yeah, she ain't fire. That I can tell. But she's clack clacking over there. Now no more clack. So, I don't think we've got fire in the hole. So let me try and follow these kill switch wires. I never much like these these Suzuki style man overboard switch. They got a little nipple in there and man if you even just bump them look at them wrong a lot of times they lose their spark but I put it on we'll see if that makes a difference apparently not well, let me see uh, I got some tri flow in the cylinders and I don't think it did anything I'm gonna put a little stardom's stardust fluid in there. I don't know if I can hardly. There's a little cover thing. Hey, I might be able to get something in there. Who knows? Who knows? Let's see. All right, all righty. Now I will choke it to see if I can get that stardust fluid in there. I'd say she popped. Yeah. So, I'm going to put it in the tank. I'm going to put it in the tank and see and feel if any gasolinas goes into the hole. Let me show you what I'm talking about on this intake. You see how the intake sits on the lower end of the crankcase at an angle. If you get, if you look on YouTube for Russian two-stroke outboards or old Russian outboards, they've got engines. I don't know the name of them, but they had this set up where the intake was at an angle like that, and uh, I like that about these. They look kind of like the old Russian stuff. Man, am I zoomed in or something? Nope. I feel like I am, though. I'll back up a little bit, I guess. All right. I think, almost sure that's an Evan Roos fitting. We'll find out here in just a second. Yep. Now, let's see if gas goes in. Well, it feels like it's going into the bowl. Show sure does. So, I would say it was empty. I got a good, solid, firm bowl now. I'm going to give it another drink. Actually, I'm going to take off that little plastic cover.
so I can give it a drink. That thing. <laughs> Pop that off of there. Push the choke in. Give it a little drinky. Here, let's do that. Take that off, put it in gear, that way I can throttle up wide open. Ah. Then, we're gonna throttle back and neutral. Um, pull the choke, squeezy bulb. Let's see what we get. No, let me open the choke just a little if I can. It'll do that. I don't know that it will. I'll try it. take the carb off and clean it but uh just not running as smooth as I think it should that's for sure. I have to look at the old regime.
right, you see all that yuck? All that whatever that is. That needs to, yeah, it's all in there. Yuckity duck. Same back here, it's got quite a bit. So, um, I think the next step's gonna be, I'm gonna get the uh, carburetor off there. That's not a garbage rater, that's a good carburetor. Um, all aluminum, twin cylinder, single carb. Yeah, Suzuki. They are, man, they are one of my favorite outboards. They are solidly built. All right! I'm ready to show you what's in these. Let me scoot that over there. Let me scoot those back there. My big chiefs. Oh, man. These are basically almost a cold smoked salmon. All right, because I put a little bit of heat, then I turn off the heat. Um, and I get a pan of wood chips smoking, but no heat. So the wood chips just sit there and kind of smolder and provide. And I do this over a period of like, two days and it makes a wonderful like lock salmon I'll show you that later in another video um, you can cold smoke in these big chiefs and everything it's a combination this is my dry box I don't know if you I don't know if it's in there I've got a couple of them that's my dry box I'll show you over here it's got screens. I put a fan. If the wind ain't blowing, I put a fan in there and, or next to it and blow. Here's another dry box I have. So you can cold smoke with these um, Big Chief smokers. You just got to... It's, it's a patience thing. Um, just because they have... An electric element in there don't mean you need to leave it burning constantly use it to get the wood chips going and then unplug it and let the wood chips just smolder and smolder let it cool down and if I have to depending on the moisture in the air I'll, I'll, I'll uh, put it back in the dry box so it works out good like that and I'll show you here's an indication this got hotter than I wanted it, but this was on the bottom rack. You see this this fat line? You don't want to lose that. That that's not. I mean, that's not wonderful. You want that that fat and everything and the oils inside the fish. So I got a little bit hotter than I want to, but this is still beautiful, yummy. These are sockeye salmon. Caught right out of my backyard. You understand? Beautiful smoked fish. Oh. A bagel, some cream cheese. Oh. So we're gonna put that right in this big old bag. Whoa! Whoa! Let me see what else. Um, oh, for those in the know, for those who are in the know. You know, because I live up here in the Pacific Northwest. Do you know what that is? Now I'm going to turn around and give you a clue. See that? See how it's cut? See how it's shaped? This is the Cadillac of smoked so sockeye salmon. This is the belly this has the largest concentration of oil 
that beautiful omega-3 oil. But the bellies, I mean, these are the Cadillac. Ooh, so good. So, I've got two big chief smokers full of these things. Oh, look at that. I wonder what the rich people are eating tonight. Now, if you look, this almost has a translucent. It almost has a, like a translucent look to it. And that's what I'm going for with a, what I call, you know, uh, what, what do I call it? I call it the... Uh, cheating cold smoke <laughs> the abbreviated cold smoke salmon it has that like almost kind of jerky look to it like salmon jerky or whatever um but it, it's my favorite i like i've had what they call hard smoke dried um Squaw candy salmon, which is more of a dried fish with very little smoke. But I, and keep in mind, I've lived up, up here for 40 plus years in Alaska. And uh, I have a lot of people with a lot of knowledge that teach me and have taught me the craft of smoking salmon and I found and and some of them are you know more of a dried fish some of them are more of a uh, smoked fish um, we even have a population of what they call Russian Aleuts or Aleutic Russians here and they they use a candied um, method that is like almost like jerky salmon jerky and i do like it um they, they brine it with um salt, sea salt and everything and raspberry uh juice and and rhubarb and stuff and it, it's really good it, it is truly but it's more like a candy um i like my fish to take a kind of like a little bit of fish and I like the hot smoked kippered salmon, which I eat on crackers with hot sauce and everything. But I also like this. It's it's a medium. It's kind of not hard smoked, not not cold smoked. It's in between, but it's not real sweet. I mean, there's a little bit of sweet there, but it's mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's yummy. <laughs> yummy. Um, <clears throat> so what I would say there, that was what I will call an express facts check. I didn't uh, do the spark checker on this motor, and there is a reason. The ignition systems, from my understanding, and, and this is what several other uh, subscribers have weighed in on these, they have a little bit of a different ignition system on these older uh, two-stroke Suzuki's. And I even have a special, well, it ain't special, but an adjustable uh, spark checker I use. It's just the kind that you can deal in real close. And even then a lot of times on these Suzuki's I'll have to cut off the lights, shut the door. 
in order to see that spark. It's that faint. It's a real skinny, skinny uh, spark that they emit. And, and for me, I think some of it's just my, my vision. My eyes aren't that great. Um, but I, I generally will do this on a, on, a, on a Suzuki. I'll load the cylinders with some tri-flow, give it a shot of starting fluid down its throat. <clears throat> The tri-flow, because it has oil mixed in with it, um, but it also has a good propellant in there, a good pop starting. So that protects the cylinders and so forth um, until the actual two-stroke mix gets in it. Yeah, these, these Suzuki's are, are strange like that. They have a real faint, thin, um, almost undetectable spark to them. Whereas you, you hook an old Johnson up about this same year, you know, you'll get that nice, big, thick, fat, bright, spark jumping, you know, 7 sixteenths of an inch. Not on these Zookies. Not that I've found in my experience. They're different. <clears throat> so I, I generally go that route on these. Um, and uh, I'm going to take the carburetor off, take it apart. I'll probably put it in my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, though it runs, and it runs kind of typical of these carburetor, what I call slave sharing setups. In other words, two cylinders, one carb. Um, they don't seem to idle as good as, say, a 40 horse, 30 horse power Yamaha or Suzuki. Uh, two-stroke from later models. Suzuki did make a 30 and 35, I know because I had one. I gave it to a friend of mine. Um, it was three cylinders, three carb, two-stroke, and if I remember right, it was uh, VRO. And it ran real smooth. And, and, and that's because of the triplets, because of the three carbs. Each cylinder has a dedicated fuel flow to it and so forth. Um, my 40 DT40 Suzuki that I have on my Bay Runner skiff, it runs a lot like this one. Um, it, it's shaky and everything at idle, but boy, once you give it the the throttle, it it, it opens right up, smooths right out. And uh, but then when I'm coming back in to the harbor or whatever, I'll idle it down and da -da 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 -da, and it, it shakes. It's a twin cylinder single carb as well, and uh, so you get that with these this type of setup. Um, they just don't run as smooth at lower RPMs as the triplet uh, or twin cylinder, twin carb, three cylinder, three carb type setup. But this one, so the carburetor is easy to pop off there, a couple nuts and right off it comes and I'll take it apart and we'll look inside there. But the next step with this guy My friend, super clean, it needs a thorough scrubbing. So we're going to get that done. Um, I don't know how long this one's getting, so it might be in the next video, but I think this one's getting there. So um, anyway, she's a runner. We're not ready for the outboard dance yet. We got some work to do. We'll get there. And that's another thing. If anybody knows a paint source for these mid-80s two-stroker Suzuki's, I don't even know what you call that color. It's not green. It's not gold. It's not, I don't know what it is. But I have never even gotten close to matching it. So if anybody knows where I can get some, put it down there for me. Uh, or if you know, you know, like an automotive rattle can dupla color at Napa or something like that, that can get close. So if you're one of these Zuki owners and you know about the Zuki paint, dial me in down there so I can get me some. Um, but a good thorough clean on a carb clean. And then there's some other things. It's got this old rusty steering tube. I'm going to cut that out of there and make that look a little better. 
and then we'll uh, uh, drain that lower unit, look in there and see what we got in, in there as far as the lubricants go. So, like I said, I think this one might be getting a little bit long. I want to thank you for stopping in. And as always, that's one more hat from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.